Richard Evan Schultes is known as the father of ethnobotany. He started out in the early part of the 20th century as essentially a, a poor nerd from East Boston, uh, went to Harvard as a scholarship student, and ended up being the most well-regarded, uh, the most famous, uh, the most important explorer of the Amazon rainforest of the 20th century. Schultes came to Harvard in 1933 as a scholarship student. He enrolled in a very famous class called Bio 104 Plants and Human Affairs. It was taught by Oakes Ames, who became Schultes' his mentor. Now, Oakes Ames was a Harvard patrician. He ran the Botanical Museum out of his pockets. This is the depths of the Depression. But he played a much more important role than just funding. He was the mentor. He was the fellow who inspired Schultes. He was the fellow who taught Schultes about the connection between plants and people and people and plants in a very famous course called Bio 104. I took it myself three times and it became such a standard in the Harvard repertoire that Schultes ended up teaching it himself. So Ames taught Schultes, Schultes taught me, and more importantly, many, many, many other people who went on to careers in medicine and anthropology, and he taught us all about the interconnectedness of nature, which is ultimately not only a conservation lesson, but a shamanic lesson as well. Schultes did such an excellent term paper for the course that Oakes Ames funded Schultes to go to Oklahoma and study peyote in situ with the Kiowa peoples. Now, as far as I know, Schultes had never left New England. I don't think he'd ever left the state of Massachusetts up to that point. He then went to Mexico and essentially discovered magic mushrooms. Of course, he was taught it by his indigenous colleagues and teachers, and then went to the Amazon for over a decade and discovered ayahuasca. So Harvard was fundamental in putting him on that path, and I think Schultes repaid it in full by bringing to the outside world the lessons of the importance of indigenous wisdom, the genius of indigenous healers, and the importance of the alkaloids in these plants for which we're still finding new therapeutic purposes. Schultes was one of the greatest plant collectors of the 20th century. He brought back from the tropics, now not just the Amazon, but also from Mexico where he did his PhD work at Harvard, uh, a total of over 24,000 specimens. That's an extraordinary number. I think over 100 were named in his honor, and that's the ultimate accolade for a botanist or a zoologist to have a species that you discover uh, named in your honor. Schultes did his undergraduate work at Harvard focusing on peyote, and in examining specimens of peyote in the herbarium, he found a note saying that the indigenous peoples of southern Mexico were not consuming peyote as a sacrament, they were consuming magic mushrooms. Now, magic mushrooms were mentioned in the Spanish Chronicles 500 years ago at the time of the conquest of the Aztec, but nobody knew there were hallucinogenic mushrooms in the Americas. And Schultes went down there and found it. Now, he's often credited as discoverer of magic mushrooms, but Schultes himself was always quick to point out that ethnobotanists don't discover anything. It's shown to us or taught to us by our indigenous guides and our indigenous teachers. But by the age of 26, Schultes had brought peyote, in essence mescaline, and psilocybin uh, in the magic mushrooms to the attention of the outside world. Schultes discovered many species uh, throughout his time in tropical America, none more important than Banisteriopsis copy, known to the outside world as ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is now being employed in workshops from Indonesia to India to Istanbul, but it all comes out of the Northwest Amazon where Schultes did his work, and he was taught about the use and the therapeutic importance of ayahuasca by shamans of the Kamsa tribe, the Kamsa peoples in the Sibindoy Valley. But it was Schulte's work that brought it to the outside world. The peyote cactus is known scientifically as Lophophora williamsi. This is a small cactus native to the Texas-Mexico border. Schulte's did one of the earliest uh, pieces of seminal field work on this cactus, and in so doing, helped bring mescaline to the outside world. Mescaline is what was taken by Aldous Huxley, who was inspired to write The Doors of Perception based on his experiences. That was then uh, the inspiration of Jim Morrison, who went from The Doors of Perception to The Doors. So Schulte's impact is not just in the medical world, not just in the conservation world, but even in the musical and the cultural world as well. Indigenous peoples of the Northwest Amazon have long claimed that one of their sacred plants that very few people have heard of. I mean, many people have heard of ayahuasca, but few people outside the region have heard of yoko. Yoko is a plant they value as a stimulant, and they claim it has anti-malarial properties as well. Of course, keep in mind that the greatest anti-malarial uh, compound of all time comes from the quinine tree, 
which is found just west of there in Western South America in the Andes. One of Schulte's most important finds was that of the magic mushrooms, I now know as members of the genus Psilocybe. At the time, people had heard of magic mushrooms, but there were real doubts as to whether they existed. Schultes went down to Oaxaca in southern Mexico and found the indigenous peoples using them for divinatory and curative purposes. These days, psilocybin has gone through the roof in terms of demand. The good news is this stuff seems to be pretty easy to grow. But one of the great ironies is that psilocybin mushrooms are found around the world. There's probably uh, over a dozen species here in Massachusetts. So it's sort of a delicious irony and that Schultes had to go to the deep dark recesses of tropical Mexico to find that there were indeed magic mushrooms when in fact they're growing right here in Massachusetts where he spent his entire life outside of his time in, in Mexico and the Amazon. Schultes became one of the world's authorities on rubber. Rubber is native to the Amazon and when the war broke out we realized how great was our need for rubber. A single Sherman tank could take a ton of rubber all the battleships had wires covered in rubber. But the problem was that rubber was grown commercially in plantations in Southeast Asia, which had been seized by the Japanese. So when Pearl Harbor uh, took place, Schultes reported to the American embassy to see if they wanted to send him off to fight in Europe or, or the Pacific. They said, hell no, get back to the Amazon and help us figure out how to get more rubber out of its original home. So he, by, by dint of that assignment, became the reigning expert in rubber and its natural habitat. And I might add that we sort of think of, well, synthetic rubber has replaced natural rubber. That's not true. Airplane tires, condoms, uh, surgical gloves, uh, typically have a component of natural rubber. And Schultes was the fellow who knew these best. He says, if you want to know a plant, you have to live with it. And because he lived in the Amazon for over a decade studying rubber, living with the trees, he knew it better than anyone else ever did it, certainly outside of indigenous societies. There aren't many blue orchids, uh, and there's one in the Northwest Amazon that Schultes long sought and eventually found. So what many people are unaware of is that when Schultes came back to Harvard, he was the curator, in other words, the boss of the orchid collection, so that he really did know his orchids. In fact, one of his first books was on the orchids of Trinidad and, and Tobago, which he studied as part of the tropical American flora. So his work on orchids is very much overlooked, but it was one of his passions and one area where he was a leading authority. When Schultes came to Harvard in 1933, medicine and botany were deeply intertwined. Most, most medicines were made from natural products, most of those from plants. Through the course of time, we've gotten away from that. We use a lot of semi-synthetic products based on natural products. But Schultes' seminal work on hallucinogens is one example of why Western medicine is turning back to nature, uh, why we're still finding new things, why we're still finding new applications. Schultes in his famous Bio 104 Plants and Human Affairs class would always quote the extraordinary pharmacist Paracelsus, the father of pharmacology from 500 years ago. The dose makes the poison. In other words, if you take a lot of it, it's deadly. If you take less, it can have therapeutic effects. Schultes was sent to the Amazon in 1941 to look at aral poisons, curares, which were then becoming important in Western medicine. Well, they've been replaced by synthetics, but once again, the natural product led the way. And also, even though many of these biodynamic compounds in plants and fungi, and now even in animals, may not lead to a new medicine, but may give us a better understanding of the human body, the brain, the nervous system. So there's many ways in which these natural products can be important. One of the most important aspects of the results of Richard Evan Schulte's life and career was that his work with the Mazatecs about bringing the magic mushroom to the outside world is that Albert Hoffman, who was a close colleague of Schulte's, worked on these mushrooms and is the fellow who isolated psilocybin. Of course, Albert Hoffman is better known as the synthesizer of LSD, but Hoffman indeed was the fellow who extracted psilocybin from the mushrooms, developed the means to synthesize psilocybin, and it was Albert Hoffman himself who later said beta blockers, one of the most important classes of cardiac drugs in the world today was created by Albert Hoffman using some of the compounds from the mushrooms uh, brought back by Schultes and taught to Schultes by the indigenous peoples. Schultes, as early as the 60s, was talking about the fact that the rainforest was disappearing uh, much faster than, than people knew or understood or understood the importance of. He also talked about the fact that the indigenous cultures and the indigenous wisdom was disappearing much faster 
than the rainforest itself. The famous writer William Burroughs, who's another Harvard man, uh, met up with Schultes in uh, Columbia in the 60s. And when they got to what had once been a beautiful rainforest, Schultes says, where's it gone? They've destroyed it all. So if you read the Yahe papers, you'll see that Schultes was sounding the alarm long before many people realized and long before there was a conservation movement. One of Schulte's greatest contributions to the conservation movement was Chiribiquete. Chiribiquete is an area in the central part of the Northwest Amazon. Americans think of the Colombian Amazon, if they think of it at all. It's kind of like a little suburb of Brazil. The Amazon is Brazil, Brazil is the Amazon. It's not true. The Colombian Amazon, where Schulte's work, is bigger than New England. That's a lot of rainforest. And smack dab in the middle of the Colombian Amazon is Chiribiquete, this land of lost world mountains, this land of three uncontacted uh, tribal groups, this land which harbors the greatest collection of pre-Columbian art known. There's thousands, 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 thousands of paintings we know of. Schultes worked with the Colombians for decades to have this turned into a national park. And when Schultes talked about conservation, he didn't just talk about plants and animals. He talked about indigenous peoples and their wisdom. I think part of Schultes' importance is not just as a conservationist, not just as a scientist, but as a, a leader and inspiration. This is a man who E.O. Wilson proclaimed as his personal hero, and so did Allen Ginsberg, the beat poet. I don't know anybody else fits that description. And at the time, on campus, when I was here, starting in the early 70s, Schultes was already a legend. People looked up to him, and he was kind of the bridge, the bridge between 19th century uh, natural history people like Alfred Russell Wallace, who explored the Amazon, Richard Spruce, who explored the Amazon with Schulte's hero, and this you know, 21st century appreciation for the importance of nature, the importance of natural product, the importance of shamans and shamanic wisdom and methodologies. Schulte's was a mentor to me, a leader, an inspiration, but it's important to point out that his influence extended far beyond uh, me and my career. That there are many, many, many uh, kids who went through Harvard who were inspired by Schulte's, uh, who were directed by Schultes, and his influence on the Harvard community was really uh, much larger than one would expect. So I'm still working in the rainforest, I'm still working to protect the rainforest, I'm trying to carry some of his legacy forward. But there are many other scientists uh, who were uh, inspired by Schultes, not, and not just the person, not just the class, but his persona, that you could live in these remote places. You can learn things you can never learn in the classroom at Harvard. You can never learn in the very at Harvard. And so this combination of the high ivory tower of academe and living in the mud and the dirt and the heat of the rainforest in, in the roundhouse in the Maloka uh, was the combination that was an inspiration to so many of us and continues to be.